Hey, what's going on guys? Skit Gaming here, and today we're going to be running through the basic usage of firearms in Blood and Iron, as well as each weapon's inherent strengths and weaknesses. First, we're going to go through the basic operating procedure. Step 1. Equip firearm. Step 2. Left click to cock. Step 3. Right click to aim. Step 4. Left click again to fire. Step 5. Press R to reload. Now there is an intricate process to reload a flintlock weapon, but since Blood and Iron does it all for you, I'm not going to get into that. The lengthy reloading process means that every shot counts, so make sure to aim well. If you're reloading, you can even hold your cursor over an enemy to have a good shot already lined up for when you can fire again. I wouldn't think that this would be an issue, but many viewers have commented about aiming help. The aiming process is simple. Place the small white dot at the center of your UI over whatever you want to shoot and left click to fire. The only difficult part about aiming is patience. Most good shots require a player to be very thorough when aiming. It should be noted that there's a slight delay between you clicking and your gun actually firing as the hammer strikes the frizzin. This would only be an issue if you were shooting at a fast moving target, such as cavalry moving horizontally across your line of sight. To compensate for this, make sure to track your target with the aiming reticle through the entire firing process. Finally, there's no bullet drop in Blood and Iron that I know of, but bullet speed does exist. This isn't a problem though, since the bullets move so fast that nothing can dodge them. The rifle is a weapon that was designed by God himself for the Israelite shock troops entering the Promised Land to use against the native Canaanites. However, unbelief and disobedience caused God to withhold the rifle and deny that generation of Israelites entry into the Promised Land. Rifles only came into large scale use a while later in the early 1800s, where they were given to sharpshooters for precision sniping. In Blood and Iron, the rifle is lethal about 99% of the time. At extreme ranges, the rifle will sometimes only deal 3 quarters damage to a healthy player, but it would hardly be fair if this gun didn't have some handicap. It's also ultra precise, meaning that the vast majority of bullets you let fly or go where you tell them to. The only real drawbacks to the rifle are its reload time, which is a relative eternity, and the fact that it doesn't have a bayonet. The rifle is a marksman's weapon, not for the inexperienced or faint of heart. The Line Infantry Musket, or as I'll be calling it the Line Musket, is the standard firearm of Blood and Iron. It's a very reliable and versatile weapon that can be used in almost any scenario, but it's often not used to its fullest potential. The Line Musket is lethal at close and usually medium ranges, but deals half health at anything beyond that. It also boasts a decent reload time at 10 seconds. Although it's outclassed by the rifle in accuracy and damage, the musket has a bayonet affixed to the end of the barrel, allowing for melee engagements. I find the bayonet feature most useful when I have to deal with enemy cavalry, because bracing the bayonet by pressing C will mean a quick death to any horse that comes into contact with the blade. This makes fighting enemy horsemen much easier, because a rider without his mount isn't nearly as dangerous. Overall, the line musket's a very reliable and easy to use weapon. The light infantry musket, given to skirmishers, is something of a cross between the line musket and the rifle. It features better range than the line musket and supposedly reloads slightly faster but doesn't have a bayonet, meaning that you'll have to resort to your sidearm if you want to do some close-up damage. The light musket, along with the hand axe, is one of the main reasons people play as light infantry. Overall, the light musket is a good weapon for those who want to specialize in longer range engagements but don't want to commit fully to the rifle and its drawbacks. The musketoon, given to dragoons, is the unholy child of the light musket and the pistol. Positive traits include being able to use a gun as cavalry and fast reload speed. Negative traits include a very sharp damage drop off and horrible accuracy. In my opinion, the best way to utilize this weapon is to ride into battle, dismount but stay on top of your horse, take a quick shot, and make a hasty getaway. The musketoon also comes in handy if your horse is killed and you need a ranged weapon to continue the fight. Who could forget everybody's favorite cancer machine, the pistol? Given to officers of all nations, the pistol possesses a unique ability. Anyone using it can move while they aim and reload. Although you move slower when aiming and reloading, it's still better than being stationary. However, every benefit comes with a price. In the pistol's case, the price is having the worst accuracy and damage in the game. Pistols will kill from about 5 feet away, but anything beyond that and your bullets just tickle a little bit. Despite this, the pistol does serve one purpose particularly well, close quarters combat. The combination of mobility, quick reloads, and relatively small silhouette that someone aiming a pistol presents make fighting in buildings and courtyards a lot easier. On a large open map like Grasslands, the pistol is only useful as a talking piece. It should also be known that the pistol comes in silver. This special gun is given to officers of the 42nd Regiment on foot, adding extra flair to the already unique Scots. The silver pistol does not differ from the standard one in terms of performance. 
Thank you all so much for watching this video, guys. I hope it helped you out. Big thanks to Darth Zachary, Andy the Awesome 10, and Awesome Iron Man for helping me film it. They're all pretty cool guys. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up below. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. If you want to talk to me or link up with other subscribers, join my Discord server, linked in the description. If you're interested in joining a professional blood and iron group, check out the French Empire Roblox group and Sparks of Revolution Discord server, both linked in the description below. Thanks for watching once again. I'll see you guys next time. Skit Gaming signing out. Goodbye.